Hello and welcome to the WTF Performance Channel. My name is Joel. I'm Lindsay. Happy Halloween season. It is October. It is cold as hell already. <laughs> yeah. We haven't done any videos in three weeks and there's a couple reasons why. One, I got a cold for the first time in two years and it kicked my ass. Mm -hmm. So for like a week, I just kind of chilled out. I did little stuff around the house and uh, just rested up. Yeah. And number two, because it's getting cold, we had a neighbor move into our house in the form of an asshole raccoon, <laughs> a trash panda, a piece of shit. <laughs> so after uh. evicting that neighbor, yeah. We had to do some major repairs on the house in order to prep for winter anyway, mm -hmm. but it did dominate my time for a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it turned out real nice. We still got to get some paint on the house now that we got some siding repaired, roof repaired, fascia boards repaired, patio repaired. All that fun stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> there's still some work to do, but we can finally dig back in to the old Z project. And uh, there's just some little stuff I want to start tinkering with. It's easy stuff, but it's stuff that's very specific to this car. Like the fuel gauge works, but it goes away. <laughs> it just stops working. And then it works, then it stops working. Z guys already know what it is, but it's this little box under the dashboard where the, I guess the joints become like unsoldered or just the connections go bad and you just got to open it up and re-solder those connections and uh, get that working back in uh, tip-top shape and then uh, one thing I did notice I left the car outside in the rain one day and I was like oh. I should pull it in and so it was night it was cold <laughs> rainy I hopped in and sat in a ice cold puddle of water and it was horrible <laughs> so Maybe kind of take a look at those T-top uh, drains and seals and maybe um, I'm sure they're going to be impossible to make not leak but maybe we'll take a look at those and see if we can uh, freshen them up a little bit. What else? I'd love to get the exhaust done. 
Yeah. It is. We just went for a little cruise around the neighborhood. Oh, my ears are ringing. Uh, yeah, I can't hear out of my right ear. For <laughs> sure. Um, the car is loud, but also just the where it ends under the car, it resonates straight into the cabin. Um, there's a couple rust holes to repair. So, what should I start on today? Hmm. I don't know either. <laughs> Let's take a break. Yes. One of the things that drives me nuts about old 80s cars is the key. You put it in the door to unlock it. The mechanisms are all gunked up or broken. And uh, you, the other day I locked the car because I stored it outside. And then when I went to unlock it, the little car alarm was going off. And it was super frustrating because you couldn't turn it off with the key because all the mechanisms inside are all gummed up. I went ahead and opened up the door. I lubricated everything, kind of worked everything. This thing was broken. Looks like it had a little shoddy repair with a wire, but I went ahead and just adjusted a little bit. It, it works okay still. I guess I could get a replacement for this pretty easily and uh, swap that out later. But for the most part, now the door handle is kind of hanging open before. Now it retracts all the way. The lock and unlock actually functions now. And I really thought for 15 bucks now, you can get a key fob. So I got a little kit shipped on Amazon, 15 bucks. And it's just a super simple, no car alarm, no nonsense, just lock and unlock. But these 80s cars, they didn't even have a switch when it's like a coupe. They, everything just runs off of the driver's side. Say unlock the driver's side, all the doors unlock. You lock, same thing. So, you gotta add one of these. I went ahead and marked some holes. I'm gonna drill the holes out and just mount this thing in there. One little linkage. It'll link onto this lock and unlock bar. And uh, looks like the other side doesn't even work. So that one just needs a replacement unlock and lock motor. But little tinkering on this and I should have a key fob to lock and unlock the car which makes it way more convenient and hopefully it will keep the car alarm from complaining at me when I lock and unlock the car. <laughs> so let's go ahead and knock that out. Keyless entry is installed. Lock and unlock. Perfect. I did have to add actuators to the doors. Uh, I got it pre-wired for the other door. I'm just waiting on an actuator. I ordered it on Amazon, so be here in a couple days. Two screws, two wires, and then this thing is done and both doors will lock and unlock. And that's the kind of thing that makes a car like this way more usable you know sticking the key in the door like i said it like was so hard to turn the key is like twisted and it just doesn't work so literally 20 bucks worth of actuators and a keyless entry kit and now you can secure your car after you park it somewhere amazing <laughs> but 
There's a couple other things keeping me from putting this interior back together. I hate doing double work, so we're gonna tackle them all before I put the interior back together. The next thing I wanted to hit is this thing. This is right above your right knee under the kick panel, and apparently it manages the fuel gauge and the connections in here get worn out over time, so I guess the easy fix for them is to just resolder all the connections. So I went ahead and popped this off, so then uh, maybe tomorrow morning before I come out to the ice cold garage, I can chill out inside, warm up the soldering iron, and just knock that out inside. Plug that back in, and that should fix the fuel gauge. And uh, it's kind of, I don't know if the reading, I trust it yet. I might pop that uh, thing out of the fuel tank and clean all the connections in there and that might make me feel more comfortable but as i drive the car around maybe i'll carry an extra gallon of gas or so <laughs> just in case until i figure out if it works properly or not um, i should probably fill the tank too and actually see if it registers full so got a couple things but that's the kind of stuff you learn when you actually start using a car uh, another thing I want to do before I put this interior back together is this thing's been missing a head unit. I see that the front speakers are still wired and because the left side still works with the uh, the voice, the Nissan voice, I think all the wiring is intact but the rear speaker wiring I'm not sure about because he had, whoever owned this car before ran speaker wiring. so. I think I'm gonna wire up the head unit and actually click it on and test it and see what comes out of what speakers and what speaker wire work and which ones don't. And if I need to run some fresh wires, it'll be super easy because the interior is all taken apart still. So I think this will be next. Then uh, tomorrow we'll throw a head unit in and start tinkering with that and putting everything back together after that. So see you tomorrow. Alright, so I got the board out. This is the power source for what I think is the speedometer, but definitely is the fuel gauge as well. I was having intermittent fuel gauge issues where the actual lights and the whole little side of the dashboard that has the fuel level in it just would not even turn on. Or you could kind of hit the underneath of the dashboard and get it to flash on or come on for a little while. You hit a bump, it goes away. So from what I researched, most of these Z's, just these old electronics are suffering and uh, just need a quick resolder. I checked the board. I'm not like a super electronics whiz or anything, but I did notice some rust and stuff on some of these little terminals. So I went ahead and just um, 
cleaned them up with a brush and then just pretty much touched my soldering iron to them got the solder wet maybe give it a little scratch to make sure it had good contact with the board and that's really it I did mess up one little thing these two little screws in the board I thought were holding the board into the case so I was struggling to get them out I stripped them I uh, broke the heads off them then I realized that it was actually just this glue on the other side of those heat sinks that uh, was holding the board in. So don't take those two little screws out if you want to do this. Um, that said, they're studs now. This is pressed into the case and um, I don't, I'm not even worried about them rattling around. I'm just going to throw that back together. I went ahead and plugged it into the car to make sure that my fix worked. And actually in my case, just after I soldered these connections, I still realized that if you moved the connector a certain way, it would come on and off. And so uh, I went ahead and cleaned up these connections too. A little brake clean, a little brush in there, and uh, just cleaned it out. Sure enough, I plugged it back in and everything seems to be working. So I'm gonna go ahead and slam this back together, pop it in the car, and make sure that we're good to go. All right, so we got that uh, power source reinstalled. Let's see if now that it's all bolted up and the connections are clean, if it actually works. Boom. I'm really confused about the flashing E and the no fuel light with a quarter tank. <laughs> I'm sure that's that sender that needs to be cleaned. You know, I did the whole fuel pump and everything, and I don't know why I didn't think to take the fuel level sender out and clean it, and that's my bad. But I can at least access that with the fuel tank installed, so I'm not totally screwed. <laughs> why didn't you do that? Uh, I know. <laughs> you had one job. Oh. Make sure I don't fuck up the job. <laughs> Okay. All right, two more things before that interior goes back together, and that's fixing some rust and also putting in a head unit because you can't cruise without some tunes. So I went ahead and bought a super cheap, but kind of interesting looking head unit. So I believe this thing lights up green. It'll kind of match the interior and you know, they're super simple. No CD player, no nothing, just Bluetooth, auxiliary input, SD card, USB, just all the cool new stuff that uh, that you need. Go ahead and pop this in. I'll test all those speakers, make sure they're all hooked up. I might have to run two speaker wires to the rear speakers if those got damaged over the years from other horrible head units being installed, but uh, kind of pumped about this. I always like the simpler stuff. You know, all I want is for it to hook up to my phone and nothing else. So that's exactly what this is. Update, I did my normal thing. I can't just touch one thing. I I took it all apart. <laughs> I, uh, I was tinkering, trying to get my hands on those stereo wires and I was like, hmm, I wonder what this screw undoes. And I kept going until the climate controls fell out. And then I was like, you know what? While I'm in here, the bulbs on those Gauge pod gauges are all burned out. Maybe I'll get my hands back there and change those bulbs while I'm at it. And now those are out too. Which is great because now I can change all those bulbs. I went ahead and ordered some green LED bulbs. I can replace them all super easily. But now I have to wait till Friday to put it back together. <sighs> Well, I guess we'll just keep going with the stereo wiring. If I get that done, then by Friday, the bulbs will come in, I can just plug them all in, and then put it all back together. And that means tomorrow, I can make a run to the hardware store, grab some sheet metal, and get some of this rust holes patched up. It's mainly just two in the trunk, under the spare tire, and under the tool kit, those things are, they're just gone, so gonna take a little work but uh 
The goal is to get the interior sealed from the outside world. I'm being pretty OCD right now. I, I'm i trying to figure out the stereo wiring. I think the wiring that I'm looking at on my phone isn't matching the wires that I see in front of me. So I'm kind of puzzled on that. I might have to go back to the drawing board on that one, look up a different uh, wire set color guide. But I'm sitting here in this interior and I'm like, I should get the headliner out because <laughs> it needs to be rewrapped. And now I'm doing that. And it's almost out. Oh look, he just railroaded some screws in there that I missed. One sec. My OCD is striking again right now because in an effort to track down some speaker wires, I popped the hatch to look at the rear speaker wires and what color they are and how they head to the front. And uh, you know what? This old spoiler, it's that classic Nissan foam spoiler and it's all like warped and stuff and I've been meaning to take it off and see what it looks like without it. And I did that. Found another wasp nest. <laughs> Actually, two. <laughs> oh my gosh, this car is just crazy. Wasps, they like disease. I don't know what else to tell you. But see if we can't fix this thing up and straighten it out, or I'll just patch the holes or rock, rock no wing. It's kind of cool though, I like it. If I can kind of straighten it back out and get it properly mounted to the trunk. We'll just have to see later. I always like to tinker on things first and just look at them myself and evaluate them and figure them out. You know, it's kind of like a puzzle. Every car I work on, every system in that car, I just like to look at it before I start researching things. and. A lot of people are the other way. They'll research it endlessly before they tackle it. <laughs> and uh, that has some benefits. Mostly that you know what you're up for. Well, I had run wires through those rubber bellows that house all the wiring between the car and the doors. And I did that for the door lock actuators. What I wish I would have known is that these cars have an amplifier under the seat for the stereo. I knew that. But, you pretty much just gotta run new wire to all four speakers. There's pretty much no way around it. I looked at like 15 different wiring diagrams, including the ones in the Haynes manual for the stereo harness, and just none of the wires in the 
plug that's in this car matches any diagram at all. I don't know what is different. I mean, this is a GLL. It's like top of the line. And that means it has some specific things, but like none of them match. So I found power. I found switched power. I put a ground and now I can, you know, power up a head unit. And I'm just gonna have to run four speaker wires, one to every speaker, and that's all there is to it. <sighs> like I said, I really wish I would've known that while I was already doing that because it is so terrible. But anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and knock that out and then the stereo harness will be ready to go to put the interior back together once I get those LEDs in. After a half a day of fiddling with a bunch of random stuff I didn't plan on fiddling with, I now have a head unit in here. I haven't put the speakers in yet because I'm still waiting to fix some rust before I throw the interior back together, but all the wires are now run to the speakers and the head unit is wired. This car is definitely haunted. I only used two original wires the battery source wire for like the memory of the head unit and the accessory switched wire both worked and i checked power at them everything was perfect i even hooked up the head unit powered it up before i ran any of the speaker wires or hooked them up and it worked and then i go to power the whole thing up at the end and the battery wire just has no voltage awesome i just <laughs> I couldn't even take it. I looked at it for a couple minutes. I tinkered with it. I couldn't find anything. There's only a fuse for the accessory wire. So I went ahead and just ran a new battery wire too to the fuse box and it works. <laughs> so I think I'm going to call it a day. Tomorrow I'm going to patch some rust and then hopefully start slamming this interior back together which is gonna be sweet. One of the cool things is I just got lucky and I decided I don't wanna lose that voice function. So I hooked up the original wires to this left front speaker and then I just spliced my new wires in and as you can hear, the sound is coming through this one speaker because that's all I have hooked up, but when I flip the lights on, it actually has a strong enough signal to just interrupt the wires altogether and take over. So it doesn't even fight for like uh, which audio it wants to play through the speaker. It just dominates it, so that's pretty awesome. But just a sweet little bonus that I still get the awesome robot voice Lights are on. and the speaker still works with the head unit so awesome i also can't get over the simple stuff man i love that it's so freaking perfect it just works i love no nonsense things no crazy car alarm with keyless entry and all this bogus stuff in there is just lock, unlock, that's it. And it works every time. Love it. <laughs>